Keep going. <laughs> These are original, okay? Numbers matching. In the last video, we just had Uncle Rob on the dyno for the very first time with the 4080 conversion that we just finished up. Pretty good power, but not good enough. I won't ruin the number for you. It's fun. It's very fun to drive. But we did it with the stock fuel pump just to see how much power could you make, like, reliably with the stock fuel pump. So, you know, like, not in danger of leaning out. Pump gas, 93 stock fuel pump with boost. Just put some injectors in and go. That's what we were testing. The test was successful. Let me tell you, it's pretty freaking awesome. If you haven't seen that video, you need to go watch that. Now, we are taking it to the next level with a fuel pump. The whole fuel system. The rest of the fuel system. From Deechworks. This is the main unit right here. With the 400 pump, the whole basket and everything, it just drops right in. However, it does not drop into the tank that is in here. We have a different tank. Um, it's actually from a 2008. So they have a bigger, bigger hole. We'll see what we're talking about when we get this one out. But first step of the process here is to get the tank out. Um, me and Logan took Uncle Rob to the gym and grocery store and stuff earlier today to get some of the gas out of there. And man, so much fun to drive, dude. Like just everything, all the rust falling on my face is totally worth it. Like just sitting there hearing that turbo noise. It's got power to pass people for days without even flooring it. And I'm just amped. That's why I'm under here about to get this done because I want this power. I need more power before we go to streetcar takeover so we can race people and freaking win or destroy them. That's the goal here. So first order of business, um, we got a bolt here for the strap, bolt there for the strap. And I think I'm gonna use the tranny jack to kind of hold it up right there because we're gonna lower the tank a bit and then we gotta unhook all the stuff on top of the tank to get the rest of the way out. So. Let's get at it. Well, I've got the training jack there. I'm just gonna loosen these before I get them out of the way. But here we go. Rusticles raining today. What the heck? There must be a nut start on the top that's spinning or something. That is not good. That is not good. Oh man. Oh boy. Here, let's try this one and see what happens. Oh. Okay, that one actually came out. But, uh, well, the problem here is the like welded nut cert on the back of here is busted loose, which I guess happens sometimes when these things are rusty like this. So what I'm gonna have to do is just cut this strap somewhere and either get a new one or weld this one back together. Not what I wanted to be doing, but hey, you know, we don't make the rules. They do, especially when they're rusty. So let's find the sawzall and get to chopping. Now the tranny jack gets to about a half inch of the bottom of this thing. I already took the other strap out. So when I cut this, it's just going to fall down about a half an inch, which is fine because it's really not gonna go anywhere. It can't go anywhere, but we're just gonna send her home anyway. Now I'm gonna go over here. This is better. Yeah. There's so much crap on the ground. I'm glad I didn't bother to sweep because there's so much stuff on the ground it would have been totally useless to do that anyway. But now we got this out. Mmm, crunchy. Once the tank is out, I can get the backside of this through, you know, there, but we'll, we'll get there. Now let's, let's drop this thing down a bit and I'll show you guys what you got to disconnect on top. Oh, great. It's not going to come down easy. Oh, never mind. And when you take this down, the front edge kind of is a little bit over this cross member. So it has to come down this way and then come down, you know, back comes down after you disconnect the uh the fill tube there which is just a couple hose clamps basic hose clamps just like an old radiator so you lower it you gotta move it back then you come the rest of the way down and then we can unhook the crap on top this will dangle a pretty pretty good way on the plastic lines that go into the uh 
been a flop. It would really help to have a second person right now, but I'm the only one here, so this is gonna have to work. So we got the new tank from the 08 Suburban. I am pretty sure it's going to fit. If for some reason there is a hang up, we will make it fit. It's just how it's gonna be. Only option. Uh, this is the retainer ring that came off of here. It was already popped out when I got the tank, but I just cleaned it out. But that's pretty much what it does. You just gotta rotate it on there. And we got the new uh, Beachworks sending unit all assembled, ready to go from the package. I might just gotta pull some of the, the plastic stuff off of here. But it came with a new O-ring, so we're gonna use that. So I would imagine that all of the thingies will point towards the front or to the side like that some capacity I really don't know I can't remember the other sending unit was already popped out when I got this so I'm just kind of flying I'm uh, flying blind here so I am moving over the little pressure sensor uh, there's one on this sending unit but I pulled the one out of the old the old unit over here it was right there I think this has something to do with the evap system i don't know i know it gets plugged into and i read somewhere that someone forgot to put this in and their truck wouldn't start i'm sure it's something that can be turned off in hp tuners when tuning the truck but i just want to make sure there's a little plug in here this is what goes in here is like the gasket but through that there's just a nut and a bolt it looks like something that holds something together here and it doesn't it is for that um this little thingy and I had to cut one of these rods. It was like, one was longer than the other and it was hitting the bottom of the bucket and it wouldn't go the whole way in the tank. I'm positive this is the correct tank for this sending unit. So I just cut it, you know, like whatever. It happens sometimes. But what I'm not sure about is if the ohm range of the fuel level sensors from this one to the original one are the same. So I may have to go in there and do some reprogramming for the gas gauge too. I don't know, we'll figure that out later. Uh, when Tanner first loaded a tune in this thing, it was from a Tahoe, and it had like five gallons of gas in it, and it said it was over half a tank. Like it went up. I'm like, did you put gas in it? He said, no. He's like, oh, it's because it was from a Tahoe. So bleh, he went back to whatever it was, went back to being normal. So it can be changed if that's a problem. I don't think it'll be a problem, but you know, we'll see. We're just winging it here, pretty much. So now I got that oriented in there. We gotta put this lock ring back on. You just set it on, you turn it, you use a screwdriver, tap it into place. The first and only time I've done this before was on the Escalade with the LSA setup five years ago when I was 19. Pretty, pretty wild to be uh, thinking I've done this before and done it that long ago. You can see there's a ridge on here and you want to beat that in until it hits uh, this first bump right here. Pretty sure. I don't think you need to beat it until it goes into this second one. But I never did that before. I never had a problem. I think it just goes right there. At least that's all the witness marks have. I made some progress. Yeah, that's good. It looks like it's in there. Yeah, it's in. And I moved this little evap sensor over to here. Um, just in case it wants to cause some kind of code or freak out. We could, since there's nothing in the tank, we could just hold it up and see if it fits. Test it. Uh, maybe I should run over eyes and grab that piece. Yeah, yeah, we need to get another uh, another nut cert. The thing that broke on me here is pretty much uh, just like a little clip, a little nut cert. And these little pieces get rusty, and when we undid it, it started spinning. So once you cut it and the tank is out, you can take it out like a regular bolt. And then in like the doorman help aisle, they have more of these so that's what we got to go get for that but i'm just eager to see if the tank actually fits in here oh by the way did not need to get new brake lines i thought i did but the real uncle rob had already had new brake lines done on this thing whoever did it just didn't take out the old um relics here which is nice Keeps the value. yeah these are original okay numbers matching <laughs> Oh man, this thing's disgusting. This is like the, the Titanic suspension over here, dude. Yeah, dude, this looks like the freaking front of the Titanic. Mm -hmm. so maybe maybe someday Uncle Rob would get a full restoration and get like a new frame. 
we'll just like blast the inside of the body and you know bedline it or something bolt that on a new frame boom good as new but until then in rust we trust salt bay guy thing all right let's shove that tank in there just to just to see i think it's worth a test run let's do it Well, guys, it works. How about that? A 2008 tank. I mean, the jack doesn't go in high enough, but you can see the strap indent is right there. We can hold this bitch up with ratchet straps, it wouldn't matter. I'm from Pennsylvania. <laughs> I have seen friends that have done that, and they've driven a long, long time with ratchet straps holding their tank up just because their old straps rotted out and their tank fell down while they were driving. That actually happens. You guys in your nor new northern states, speak up in the comments with your crazy rust stories because, you know, we we know these, these Texas guys. They don't they don't know. We don't know until you got here. Now we know a little bit. <laughs> this thing's not even bad. Like if this isn't bad, this is like, dude, this is scrapyard Texas. Yeah, no, honestly, this... but it, we're gonna make a race car. <laughs> <laughs> no, you should see some of the freaking nonsense that drives around up north. This thing is a survivor. <laughs> yes. I didn't get to see this yet. The crossmember mod? What? Is that a straight piece or? Two? Yeah, straight piece. Okay. Be because the, the saw blade, or the kerf as it's called, someone in the comments told me that, is an eighth inch thick. So I got the same thickness metal and it just fit right in there perfectly. Wow. I didn't weld this entire back piece. I like just kind of tacked it and then cut it, but it looks good. Very good. What else looks good? So look how good the Uncle Rob shirt looks covered in dirt. Ah, yes, dirty working on Uncle Rob. An Uncle Rob t-shirt. Where it's at. Stablesandautoworks.com. You can get these hats on there too. Check it out. Support Uncle Rob. If if you want, you know, I could even scrape up some of this rust under here and put it in a little baggy, authentic Uncle Rob rust and give it to you with your shirt. Don't sue us if you get tetanus. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that this now that we know this is gonna fit. Um, I guess we could get to piecing together the lines and fittings. Mm -hmm. Probably mount the regulator. Where you got the wires. That yeah. stuff, yeah, you already, you already did the wiring conversion, mm -hmm. which is good. They don't give you instructions for this, really. They tell you what, I saw online, on the online PDF, they tell you what the pins are for this pigtail, but we had to go on all data or the internet. You can find the pin out for the old, um, old connector. I forget where I put it. Ah, here. Yeah, this is only something you'll have to do if you're putting a newer tank with this newer sending unit into your older truck like this one. But that, that thing is designed to be plug and play for um, an 05 up. So if you're 05 up, that doesn't apply to you. But if you're 05, 04 down, this is information is for you. Now I guess we'll drop this thing and start piecing together the fittings. So you can get the kit from Deechworks that has the sending unit, the injectors, the lines, and the fittings. Um, my particular one doesn't have line in it because I already had line, but it has all the fittings and they're all pre-selected. There's a diagram that shows you where to put them and all that stuff. Yeah, we installed the injectors in a previous video because if you're unaware, we wanted to max out each component individually to test they were capable of instead of just doing it all at once and losing all that information every single step of the build here is a part of the process and documented on the dyno so if you're not subscribed yet and you find this stuff interesting go hit that subscribe button if you think you are just check anyway because a lot of times um it'll like unsubscribe you for some reason and if you are already leave a thumbs up because it helps the videos grow helps us do more things to old uncle rob here and it'll help us get Uncle George rolling with the 632 in it that much sooner. I like how these fittings have like a titanium looking finish on them. Yeah, they're completely different from anyone else's. Yeah. I noticed. We're used to getting the black like anodized finish, like their tool, like this nice fancy tool they send you. Yeah, these are the only fittings I have that aren't uh, Red Horse. I use Red Horse for everything else, but these ones are part of this kit, so and that's why we do that. about those is you don't get all the scratches all over them just assembling them that's a good point because you know guys we really we really can't have scratches on this this undercarriage here because you know it's just it's just so, it's too nice for scratch day end lines <laughs>
but they make ones that connect to these factory push to connect um, type fittings here. It converts the factory style like push lock fitting to a end line. So you don't have to like do anything goofy to that. It just clips right on and it'll do the same thing up by the fuel rail. What we're gonna do is just run the lines, you know, they'll go forward. We'll probably have to pull this little clip off or just go over it around or something. They'll run forward, be fastened to the body. You do, 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 pop up there. Regulator will be under the hood somewhere. And it'll go to the, the factory fuel rail. If you wanna know how to make AN lines, refer to uh, a couple videos ago in the Uncle Rob playlist. We did a full thing on how to make and run AN lines properly. So there's no need for us to film this here. It's repetitive and a waste of your time. So we're gonna knock this out and I'll explain everything after the fact. Something else we gotta figure out here is this fill hole is way smaller than the old one. This is like freaking big chungus right here. This one's really tiny relative to <clears throat> the hose up there. So I think I might just clean this off, stick it back on there, and then, you know, double hose it to smash it down. I really don't know any other better way to do it. You know, YOLO. Don't tell anyone. If it's the wrong thing to do, don't tell anyone. If it's the right thing to do, tell everyone. Because it's genius. <laughs> but here, these are just factory lines. This one's a vent, I believe. And they had this already pre-set up for the um, the return, so. And they put a cap on it, which is cool, because like, you don't need the cap, but it's on there just for transit purposes. They're thinking ahead. Ashton's got these lines made, and we are just about ready to bench test the pump before we bolt everything back up in there. Uh, we just gotta, we're gonna pour some, some E85 into the tank, just through the hole in the back before it gets all screwed up. And all, everything's, everything's hooked up here, so it should work. This way we'll know if it's gonna work or not before everything gets bolted up. Are you feeling it, Mr. Krabs? <laughs> yeah. Ashton had the foresight to make the lines long enough that we can you know, you can drop it low to service it and undo them, which is nice. But as long as you unplug this, it can drop down low pretty good. So, we got some E85 in here. Just gonna shove it in. I've never filled a gas tank directly into the gas tank underneath the car with race ethanol. This is Ignite Red, like Ignite Racing Ethanol. Um, it's it's E90. Uh, it's E90. Yeah, is what it is. It's 114 octane. So it's pure and better. It's it's just it's way better than pump ethanol, which is we're gonna do the test on pump ethanol, but we just gotta put a few gallons in here to make it start, and uh, we don't have a 700 gallon box of pump ethanol sitting 10 feet from here. We have a giant box of Ignite. So that's what we're gonna use for now. I race on Ignite, I, I run it in the Escalade and stuff, but we will be using pump ethylmanol because that's what you guys are gonna use. All right, monkey time. Now what? <laughs> do you want me to climb? Are you are you good at climbing? Yeah. Okay. I'm do probably it. better at climbing than you are. Yeah, you weigh less. Get on it, get off. Yeah, I can hear probably. You can hear it. Yep. You can you can start it. Yeah, start it. Just for fun. I want to be able to check for leaks. Though. You know what I mean? Yeah. It might not be happy because it's on Ignite now, but try it again. Uh, It'll stay running yeah. eventually. Was it on Ignite before? It was, but then it got put back to 93. Okay. I don't see nothing leaking down, so it might be okay. Keep her going! <laughs> Yep, it works. 
Don't fall. You want some help? Yeah. Cute little John. Pump, pump it up. Pump it down. Where is he when you need him? Right. Fuel system and Uncle Rob is all done, ready to go. I guess 99% done. Uh, there is one more thing we have to put on there that is not on there now. Doesn't necessarily need it right now, but we did it both ways just to show you what you can do. And that is this little thing right here. Now you can't see it, but I have this regulator here with my kit. Um, I don't have the correct O-ring base fitting, uh, like the dash 10 to a dash eight to use that regulator, but we don't really need it. And this is how you guys can do it too. If you're trying to save a couple pennies, uh, these factory intakes are already regulated. It's already one to one. So it's like a boost reference regulator already on the manifold. You don't need, um, you don't need an aftermarket regulator if you don't want one. If you change the intake, you would still need one. But we got the feed running right up through here and the return right down below there. And this is actually the uh, vacuum slash boost reference line that runs this the whole deal here. And these are the same uh, like, you know, factory connection AN fittings here. They go to factory connection right on the rail and then go to a regular AN line. So it's pretty freaking awesome how that works. And now we got a gas tank from a 2008 Suburban in a 2003. They fit, bolts right up. Uh, the sucky part is I actually don't have the factory gas tank in the Escalade anymore, which is the same tank as the one that uh, Brian went and found for me for this one. I have a tank that would have worked perfect for this sitting in my old garage in Pennsylvania. And I had the straps and all that stuff that came out of the Escalade. I could have thrown it right in here, straight up hand me down, already with the Rollboro 450 in it, but it is 16 hours away. So we just did it again, probably better the right way with the Dietchworks drop in because my 450 install was a little bit shady. It was 19, didn't know what I was doing, but we know this is gonna work. It fires up, it runs. Now we're gonna hit the dyno, but that's gonna be the next video. So if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments. This was more of an abridged version of a video than typically what I do. They're more, you know, got more nonsense in them. I cut down the nonsense this time, just the bare bones, blah, blah, blah. this is what you do. That's it, nothing you don't need to see. Again, if you wanna see how you run lines, go to the Uncle Rob playlist and watch when we made the transmission lines. It's the same process, so I didn't feel the need to cover it twice here. Now make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the dyno video. The first dyno video um, that we're gonna do after this, it's been on the dyno twice already in two different forms. The, first, the test right after this, the next dyno video you're gonna see is gonna be same boost level as the previous dyno video that we did on 93, but on E85. See how much power you pick up just from pump E85 once you do the fuel pump without changing boost at all, which is 10 to 11 pounds is what's in there now. And then after that, we're gonna add boost and turn it up and do four wheel drive launches, uh, posi install, e-fans, all that stuff. So Uncle Rob is really coming together now. And if you don't already know, you can get yourself a super awesome Uncle Rob shirt at stapletonautoworks.com. Link is in the description and pinned in the comments. Go get one. We have them in up to six XL. So we got four, five, and six. Boom. So freaking awesome. There's a hidden 69 in there too, if you didn't know. And we still got some hoodies left, some flag hoodies. Uh, Escalade shirts are gone forever. Don't know why that one's still standing there. The shirt I'm wearing, uh, we have, I think three and four X left in just that. That's it, this is discontinued now, this black one, because we have the new uh, gray pit crew style ones in there. Also sized up to six X. So you big guys step it up, I, you know, I didn't order big sizes before, but now I do just because of you. Just because you asked me to, so I'm doing it. And the hat I'm wearing is on there too. It comes with the shirt. It's actually styled after Dale Earnhardt's 1988 pit crew uniforms. So I'm gonna unfold one of these so you can show it to see it. So this is like the front and the back. The back is the same as the front, um, except the logo is a little bit bigger and but the website on the bottom, just like a real pit crew shirt had, but obviously not in 1988 because there was no internet. So the package, comes with the super awesome hat you know it's like a it's a richardson 112 so it's like a snapback one size fits all but still got that classic look 
the matching logo and you get a decal with the sucking on the bottom and you get an OG Stapleton Auto Works teal and black decal. They're good ones too. Like they're not gonna, they don't come off. You put them on your truck or something, they're not gonna fall off. And here's a close up of the Uncle Rob shirt too. Actually inspired by Kevin Harvick's old Goodwrench paint scheme. Uh, you can tell I'm a fan of that stuff. I kind of pull seeds of my favorite things from when I was a little kid and use them as fuel for stuff I do today. Pretty much sums up my entire existence. There's a hidden 69 on here too. If you already have one of these shirts and you found it, don't tell anyone where it is. But you can go to stapledonautoworks.com, hop on these, because we don't keep things in stock forever. There's typically a run of them. Maybe I get a refill if I didn't order enough the first time, and then that's it. They get phased out for something else. So right now, that's the current stuff, and it won't be around forever. That sucks, donkey dick.